Good Arab Shabbos, everybody. You all know the story of Noah and the ark. Noah built the ark, enters the ark, and the um, rest of the world is destroyed in the flood. Like any good Bible story, this was turned into a Hollywood script a few years ago. I've never watched the movie, but I've been told that it's, the book has a better version than the movie, as in most cases. Um, and yet, we read the story year after year, and as we read the stories, not only of Noah and the flood, but all those stories in the book of Genesis, again and again, we have to ask ourselves, what, if any, new insights do we learn? After all, we, can, we know these stories almost by heart. Noah builds an ark, and he goes into the uh, ark before the flood comes, and he rescues the, uh, some of the animals, and his family, and everything else gets destroyed. I want to share with you a thought tonight, I think we can all, we should all relate to it, especially in today's times of great difficulty, great challenges. In the time of the COVID era, and there are stormy seas outside. Maybe not literally, although this has been a, when I understand, a record year. Um, of a hurricane season, our uh, brothers and sisters down I-10 towards uh, the Gulf have really suffered um, many, many hurricanes this year. But uh, I'm using the stormy weather in a more figurative sense. There's lots of different challenges out there. And we're looking for somewhere calm to go. We're looking for somewhere calm to be. You know, when there's a, when there's a, a, when, when there's a hurricane coming and there's a mandatory evacuation, where do we want to go? We want to go to a, to a calm place where, this, where, where there's not going to be a storm. What was unusual about the story with Noah and the flood, the entire world, the entire world was, was uh, submerged with this flood. That's what was unique about the story. But we, in a sense, especially in Florida, have all seen these, these floods. Fortunately for us, we were able to go to different areas. But in a more figurative sense, we're looking for an oasis. We're looking for respite. We're looking for a breather. We're looking for, can I say it in this week's Parsha's term, we're looking for an ark of our own. And where do we find an ark in our own lives? Where do we find that oasis where do we find that respite in our own lives? God told Noah, I'm just going to quote to you the verse from the portion. I say, make for yourself an ark, but what about for ourselves? How do we? make for ourselves this figurative ark in our lives. So I just want to share with you two thoughts that I saw communicated in the Nesiva Shalom, two powerful ideas that we shall relate to and that we can all, we can all learn and, and, and delve into in a further and deeper way, even if we're all familiar with these ideas. And the first is the Shabbat. The Shabbat, is an oasis in our lives. And we're all familiar with the Shabbat and we're all familiar with the Shabbos. 
But the Shabbos is a gift, and perhaps it's a gift that our generation can appreciate arguably more than any other generation in history. Because arguably our generation needs the rest of the Shabbos more than any other generation in history. Because when it comes time on Friday afternoon, comes time on Friday afternoon, we get the opportunity to shut down, to close everything, close the televisions and, the, and the, all the devices, and go into a period of quiet for 25 hours. We're able to come back in touch with everything that's important to us. Come back in touch with our, with our creator, to come back in touch with our families, and come back in touch, of course, with ourselves. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the famous story of the simple man that went to the Hasidic Rebbe of Kutsk. The Hasidic Rebbe of Kutsk was a sharp man. He had many followers. And this simple man wanted to become a follower of the Rebbe of Kutsk. And the Rebbe asked him, how can I help you? And he said, I'm here, so you can help me get connected to God. He goes, connected to God? You want me to help you get connected to God? You're in the wrong place. So he says, if I'm in the wrong place, then why do people come to you? So he said, well, people come to me so people can get connected to themselves. And that's a big part of Shabbos because the rest of the week we're so busy, we're so busy with so many things, we're so busy going from one thing to the next, from one text message to the next, from one email to the next, from one tweet to the next, from one distraction to the next. We never have a moment to catch our breath. One time I had a rabbi that said, when you come to the Shabbos dinner table, and you're able to say Shalom Aleichem, sing the Shalom Aleichem. It's as if, figurative speaking, figuratively speaking, you take your keys and you hand them over to the Creator, and then you don't pick them up until after Havdal. There's so many things that may happen between Shalom Aleichem and the conclusion of Havdal. But all those things can wait. All those things can wait. And it was interesting, there was this, uh, you know, of course, I'm a confession, as some of you may know. I'm a unrepentant baseball fan. And we are now in the World Series, of course, and between games two and three. There was this baseball agent, I forget his name, I saw recently that, I um, forget the name of the player. And he had this thing that he wouldn't negotiate if it was more than an hour or two before Shabbos. And he was on a conference call with the player and the GM and a couple other people are on the conference call and he said, Gentlemen, I have to get ready for my, for my Sabbath, for my day of rest. And the GM was, was so persistent that he wanted to get the deal done. He said, no, we got to get the deal done. And the player said, I can't remember, it was a well-known baseball player that said, gentlemen, until the three stars come out tomorrow night, these negotiations are on hold. There's a lot to be said about the oasis of the Shabbos. And that is one example of a teva, of an ark that we have in our lives. It's a gift. It's a gift that we have, especially in today's times. We're able to go take a break from all the distractions and stresses. Of course, there are certain stressful things on Shabbos. But 
doesn't compare to the distractions of the weekdays. So when God told Noah, make for yourselves, make for yourself an ark, we have an ark in our lives as well. Number one is the Shabbos. The second ark that we have in our life, says the Nasib Shalom, is the ark of Torah study. Because Torah study, he says, is not just, the purpose of Torah study is not just so we can learn information. You learn information, you know, we have to learn how to put together the bookcase so we learn, take out the instructions to learn how to put together the bookcase. We have to learn how to light the menorah so we learn, take out the Torah so we learn how to, you know, that's not, that's the entry level purpose of studying Torah. The deeper explanation of studying Torah is that we're able to have a, a connection with the Almighty, this intense, compelling, significant spiritual connection with God in this world. And we're able to study the holy words and they penetrate our soul in this world. We're able to go into that oasis, that we're able to have that, that special time. We create a respite for ourselves despite the fact we live in a world of distraction, not only of distraction, but of temptation as well. And that's the gift of Torah study. It's not just to study Torah, but it's, as the rabbis have taught us, it's the Eisek Torah. It's to be immersed in Torah. As the blessing says in the morning, La Sof B'divrei Torah, to immerse ourselves in the words of the Torah. So, no, thank God, we don't have to build for ourselves an ark, a physical ark. Thank God there's not a physical flood that's gonna destroy the entire world. But the truth of the matter is, there's a figurative storm outside. There's all sorts of chaos, and all sorts of stress, and all sorts of turbulence going on outside. People are more anxious than ever. People are more depressed than ever. People are more worried than ever. There's no end to, to, to the reason why people are so worried, stressed, and depressed. And we need healthy outlets. We need healthy places to go and, and, and become recharged. We need healthy places that we can put our hair down and become recharged in a meaningful, real way. And that is the gifts, the spiritual gifts that God gave us. The gift of the Shabbos and the gift of Torah study. So ladies and gentlemen, the year has just begun, the year of 5781. We have the gift of Shabbos in our lives, we have the gift of Torah study in our lives. Let us utilize these gifts. Let us make the most out of these gifts. Let us make the most out of this oasis. And let us remember, when it gets stormy outside, it's always important to go inside and find respite in these eternal areas of calm. I wish you all a good Arab Shabbos.